So I'm sure by now most of you are aware of the pair of mass shootings that happened this weekend, and if you've been on social media at all, you've likely seen people coming out wanting to blame violent video games for what it was that happened. It seems like ever since Donald Trump came out and said that maybe there's a connection between violent video games and these mass shootings, people have been coming out of the woodwork with galaxy brain takes about how video games make people violent. Now this has been something that's been going on for a very long time. This isn't even Trump's first time speaking out against violent video games. He did so shortly after the Parkland shooting, uh, and people jumped on the bandwagon then. But this has been going on ever since Columbine, where and people have questioned whether or not video games make people violent long before then. I mean, for crying out loud, Jack Thompson basically staked his entire career on it. And during Gamergate, Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn and all those types, part of their narrative was that video games promoted violence against women. And what was pretty interesting is as soon as Donald Trump came out and said that, hey, maybe video games are making people violent, individuals like Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian quickly changed their tune and said that video games do not, in fact, make people violent. Now, there is little to no evidence to suggest that violence in video games is linked to violence in the real world. Uh, to anybody who thinks that's the case, I challenge you to go to Google and just type in violent video game studies. There are hundreds upon hundreds of studies that have been done on this subject, and the vast majority of them have come up with the result that, hey, there is no connection between violent video games and violence in the real world. In fact, some studies have actually found the reverse to be the case, where if you're frustrated and angry, you play a violent video game and you're able to take out that frustration in a digital landscape where nobody gets hurt. So in this case, violent video games can actually be a good thing and discourage people from, you know, going off and punching someone in a 7-Eleven for bumping into their shoulder or some nonsense. I mean... <sighs> How many times does this have to come up before people will learn that th there, there's nothing there? I mean, maybe some part of it is because they want to use this to push an agenda, or maybe part of it is because they want something to blame that isn't human. They don't want to think that, man, this guy was evil just because he was evil. They want to think, hey, maybe it's the video games that did it. Maybe it's the movies that did it. Trying to find something else to blame. Like, it, maybe the movies are the source of evil. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but evil is human. It is. It always has been and it always will be. There's no corrupting element to video games. There's no movies out there that are going to automatically turn you into a serial killer. This is like the satanic panic that happened with Dungeons and Dragons for crying out loud. This is, this is never going to go away. I mean, we've been seeing this mentality for so long now. I guess it's just here to stay. Either way, if you want to find something to blame, I've been thinking about this subject for quite a while. Why these two particular individuals? What has been going on that has been motivating these shooters to carrying out these crimes? And, you know, with these last two, there's been a lot of people wanting to talk about the politics of the individuals. You know, it's, it's been all over the media. This guy said this. This guy was posting about that. This guy was all right. This guy was a member of Antifa. And it got me thinking, politics might be the thing to blame. I know it sounds a little hypocritical because I'm saying video games aren't to blame and blah, 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 but, and then saying, hey, maybe politics is to blame, but think about it. We have been seeing a disturbing rise in political violence ever since 2016. I mean, the state of political discourse has just gone straight into the gutter, and it seems like nobody can have a polite conversation about politics anymore. I mean, there was a study done by, I believe they were, it was called Wakefield Research. If I remember, if I don't remember to put a link to the description in the description to the study, uh, please remind me to do so. But this study was talking about divorce rates. And they coined, uh, they coined a term called the Trump effect. And what they were wanting to do was they looked at a thousand people who had ended a relationship in, uh, ever since Trump was elected. They asked them the reason why. And it was something like 11% uh, of the people that they asked in a certain age range. It was an older age range. I can't remember. I don't have it in front of me right now. Uh, but 11% of these people who had ended a relationship said they did so because of Donald Trump. And then amongst the millennials that they had questioned, it was 20 52% of individuals said they ended a relationship because of political disagreements with uh, their significant other. Now, 
I have personally seen this myself. There are members of my family that I don't talk to anymore because of, you know, just how radicalized they've gotten with politics. I have had friends tell me that they don't want to talk to me anymore because of my own politics. I mean, this is something that is, you know, there's a lot of talk about how politics is ripping people apart. And there's been this old saying for a very long time that you never discuss politics and religion in polite company. And I, I don't know, part of me thinks maybe that's what to blame. Maybe the state of political discourse in this country is something that's motivating people to being more and more violent. I mean, look at everything that happened with Andy No, the journalist who was attacked by Antifa members. Look at all these riots that we see, like what happened during the inauguration, what happened at UC Berkeley, all of the times that happened at UC Berkeley. Look at how obsessed the media has been lately with, you know, smearing this person or trying to claim that this person is a white supremacist or that nonsensical piece that went out on, I think it was MSNBC, about finding secret codes in things that Donald Trump was doing. You know, everybody's lost their minds when it comes to politics. Yeah, I did a live stream, uh, I think last year, where we talked about how politics is the new religion and people need to stop taking elections so seriously to where it's ripping families apart and people don't want to talk to each other anymore. It's, it's not that important to where you no longer speak to your family. Politics is not that important to where you divorce your wife over it or you leave your husband over it. Just, be excellent to each other. Jesus Christ, go watch Bill and Ted for crying out loud. And you know, what else certainly isn't helping it is how the media tends to fixate on these mass shootings, how they quickly get so politicized. And everybody wants to start talking about how, oh, well, if gun control, you know, blah, 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 this wouldn't have happened. If, you know, we had these laws in place, it wouldn't happen. Well, if the Democrats weren't doing this, this wouldn't happen. If the Republicans weren't doing this, this wouldn't have happened. If Donald Trump wasn't in office, this wouldn't have happened, blah, 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 blah. All of these what ifs. No, just stop. All you're doing is pissing people off more, furthering the divide, and just making sure that we can never have a polite discussion about politics ever again. So, no, I don't think video games are to blame. If anything, I think the current course of dis political discussion and discussion in general in this country is something that's maybe contributing to this, and especially when you look at how we, like I said, we've been seeing this rise in political violence over the last couple of years. Uh, but, you know, I make this jab at how the media isn't, you know, is fixating on these things and is just talking about these mass shootings 24-7. But there's a little story that I wanted to bring up that just slipped under the radar. In Texas, there was a man who was planning a mass shooting and his grandmother found out about it and she managed to stop the th shooting from happening. So what happened there? Well, there was a 19-year-old man in Texas who I will leave unnamed. I'll put a link in the description to some coverage about this story. But the 19-year-old man put put down false statements on a background check and managed to acquire an AK-47. Uh, he was distressed and living with family and was speaking to his grandmother over the phone. The grandmother ended up finding out that he had plans to attack a local hotel and then commit suicide by cop. Uh, the grandmother was able to convince this young man to let her come and pick him up, and she t she took him to a hospital claiming that he was both homicidal and suicidal, and there you go. The, the crisis was averted all because somebody actually cared and because people were talking to one another. I mean, that's the story that should be getting a lot more media attention. We're hearing all these stories about, you know, people who, you know, during these attacks were trying to save other people. And we hear so little about them, but we hear so much about these criminals who carried out these deeds. I mean, we need to highlight the goodness in humanity instead of focusing so much on the, the terror that humanity can unleash. Anyway, that's what I got to say on the matter. Video games are not to blame. There's damn near no evidence to suggest otherwise. And the people who want to say, oh, well, there's never been any government studies into this, blah, 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 blah. Back, to, to, to answer that, back in 2013, President Obama gave ten, a $10 million grant to the CDC to investigate gun violence. So there goes that myth about, oh, the government's never looked into it. And part of that study was to address whether or not violent video games had a hand in gun violence. Now, I tried to track down the results of this study. Uh, but was unable to maybe somebody who is um, more versed at digging through the CDC website and all that stuff and all these government websites can probably find it. But I wasn't able to find the actual results and whatnot. But I'm, I'm guarantee if they did find a link between violent video games and uh, the, the supposed rise in gun violence, we would be seeing it all over the news. But 
you know, whatever. If I can find that, I'll, you know, put a link in the description, maybe do a live stream about it. I don't know. Um, but let me know what you guys think about all this. Do you agree that violent video games play a hand in making people violent in the real world? Do you think that's completely bogus? Or do you think video games have the reverse effect and actually calm people down? I know that's the case with me, but let me know what you think in the comment section. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Until next time, everyone, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon and subscribe star. You guys keep things going here. And until next time, everyone, please remember to take it easy, have fun, and let's make entertainment great again.